On the agenda tonight, we're going to be having a listen to the isolated live vocal of Elvis Presley performing Bridge Over Troubled Water. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So we've had this request to take a look at Elvis and isolate his vocal with the other videos that we've looked at recently where I auto-tuned Freddie Mercury as it was requested in the comment section and I said that that was sacrilege and I'm sure many people would agree. But we didn't realize that they have actually been auto-tuning Freddie Mercury and then I did another video on that, which was definitely a shame. I think that this video is one that people will definitely agree would be sacrilege to auto-tune Elvis Presley's voice. And I don't think they are doing it yet. I haven't found an Elvis Presley performance, whether that be a recording, a studio recording or a live performance where it has been auto-tuned. But I'm going to demonstrate in this video why, if they are trying to do it, why you might not have heard it already and the problems that they are going to be having if you try and auto-tune Elvis Presley's voice. So let's jump into Elvis's isolated vocal and this is his natural voice and as it was on the night when he performed it live. When you feeling small when tears are in your eyes I'm dreading I want your sight Oh, time gets rolling And friends just can't be found Like a bridge of troubled water I will lay me down like a I will lay me down. And I'm just going to jump in here. It is so great to hear Elvis's voice isolated like this. And the technology that we've got nowadays that can do this is amazing. It always blows my mind. But I'm going to just run this back. And by the way, the waveforms that we're looking at here are the notes and just basically Elvis's voice, but the notes that his voice is hitting. And we'll see how, when we work our way through, how seemingly random these are compared to auto-tune where we've seen previously they're on the lines the whole time. Interestingly, what we see from Elvis is in and around the lines most of the time, but here's the key. He, well, the key is C, by the way, so C major is apt. But the key is that he's hitting the notes, but he's not hitting notes. And this is why if anybody's going to try and copy Elvis's voice, they are going to have an absolute nightmare to try and produce this, practicing it this way. Because if we look at the notes that Elvis is hitting here, he's actually right between the G and the G sharp three. And his vibrato goes not only higher than the G sharp 3, it almost goes as far as the A3, and it almost goes as far as the F sharp 3. So that's the G flat, it's the same note as we take G and then go down one. So we've got over a tone's worth, actually a tone and a half's worth of vibrato here. So why this is important is because auto-tune, when it's applied, it snaps the voice to a particular note. And in this case, being in C major, what you can do with auto-tune is tell the computer what scale you want those notes to be snapped to. And in this case, the scale of C major includes A3 and G3. So we can see how Elvis has gone further than halfway to those notes with his vibrato. So the auto-tune will be snapping the notes to those two because those are two valid notes of the scale but 
the auto-tune won't be able to choose between those, it'll just snap to whichever one it is closest to, whichever the voice is closest to. So, in auto-tune, Elvis's voice doesn't work, his vibrato is too wide, it's going to be wanted to be snapped all the time. But anyway, let's get back into the analysis of his voice, because now we know how wide his vibrato is, we're going to want to have another listen to it, but then also analyze it, trying to hear where his vibrato is going and how wide it is. So let's just take it back a little bit so that we can hear this vibrato and see his voice on screen. Oh, and there, this phrase here where he goes, Oh, and he applies that vibrato and it's really fast. These waves here, if I was doing this in slow motion, it would go, oh, uh, if I'm starting here, oh, uh, and the oh uh, is where the waveforms are now getting wider. So we'll listen to that again and hopefully you guys can get an understanding of these lines and what they mean when we hear Elvis's voice. Oh, time gets so whenever you hear that wobble of vibrato, that ah, uh, you'll see those lines move. And it is such a wide vibrato, but it's so fast. So you don't really notice what he's doing until you really slow it down. Nothing's really on the line here. It's always between the lines or descending through the lines or ascending through the lines. Let's have a quick listen. When you feeling small. And that's a great example, the very first line of the song, we actually start pretty much on the C-sharp 3, but we're supposed to be at a C3, so the voice descends down to where the note is. And exactly the same here, as we come down with flat of the F-sharp 3, and then we're slightly sharp of the E3, that might have been even flat of the F3, let's have a listen. Feeling small. Yeah, it's just a little bit sharp of the E3, and then coming down, again, he's descending down to the C3, and then ascending through it, in a really short space of time. And this is what's great about seeing the waveforms, you can see where his voice goes instantly, and it just plots it out on the lines of 440 hertz tuning here, equal temperament. This isn't how music works. The lines here have been created by humans to try and translate music and sound and frequency into something that is easily read. And this is why when you listen to guys like Elvis, they've got such a unique voice because he's just singing really well. He's just got a great voice and speaks the language of music. He's hitting all the notes exactly where they should be hit, and nobody really knows exactly where those notes are, and that's the point about hearing great singers, is as soon as you apply auto-tune, it makes it sound mechanical, because that's not how music works. The note that is most full of emotion, and one that you have the strongest emotional response to, is not always on these lines. That's why music is an art. So, when you see these notes and the lines not getting hit, but it still sounds great, it's because that is music. It's not something that you can just write down straight lines and then say, oh right, that's good, and on the line means it's perfect, because there's no such thing. And so we're going to jump into the second verse now of Elvis's natural voice. When you're down and out, when you're on the street, And look at this vibrato here. We've started on the E3, we've actually ascended almost to the F sharp 3, and we've descended down beyond the D3. So when I was talking about, if I'm taking it from the D3 here, the vibrato spans not one semitone, not two semitones, three semitones, almost four semitones, which is two tones. And remember that in the scale of C, auto-tune will want to snap to an F, it will want to snap to an E, and it will want to snap to a D. So there are three notes that auto-tune's got to now try and figure out, well, which note was the singer trying to hit? 
It doesn't do that. It doesn't have that thought process. It will just snap it to the closest note in the scale, of which there are three in that one vocal phrase, in that one note. Hopefully what I just said makes it really clear as to how confusing this would be to try and organize for a computer because I literally just said that there are three semitones in this one note, which is impossible because each semitone is a note of its own. So, <laughs> It doesn't make sense what I said, but what I'm saying is he's singing a note and then his vibrato is covering three semitones. Just to try and explain this and for you guys to hear it more clearly, I'm gonna take it back to the beginning, we're gonna to listen to it, and then I'm going to use some other software to slow down Elvis's voice so we can hear what he does with his vibrato. When you're down and out, when you're on the street, so, we're going to listen to that exact phrase, but this time we've slowed it down to 48.21% of its speed. For those of you that really want the details, it's going to sound a bit weird because it is slowed down, but you need to slow it down to hear what's going on. When you down and out. I'm just going to stop it there. Hopefully you can start to hear when Elvis says, when you're down and ah, there's a semitone change there at least going ah, like that. And then you, when you speed it up, we get ah, like that. So we'll let this play on. When you're on the There's two notes in there, and we'll let it play on. When falls. And there we even went sharp. So we have this when evening falls. And he's actually going above the note that he started on. And this is where you'll start to see the waveforms just get a little bit more wild, like we've got here. As I said, if you wanted to try and copy this, you would have such a difficult time of it because of how fast and wide the vibrato is. Doing a slow wide vibrato is a lot easier because you've got more time to do it. Doing a fast wide vibrato is really difficult. And it's throughout Elvis's voice, wherever he'd be singing, he would always put it in there. It was just something natural. He just relaxed into it. It happened automatically. I'm just gonna play that second part. When you're on the street, when evening falls so hard. And there we have it. So that's so, so hard. When he applies it there, we have this. So hard. I and we can see in the waveforms when he started here, he had so hard. And you've got this wild vibrato going on. But it doesn't sound wild when he's doing it because he's got such control. You just listen to it and just enjoy the voice. Let me see if I can take this back and just get that second part. When Hopefully you can start to see, see and hear how wide that vibrato is and fortunately we do get to see it here. And it's another great example of, look, we've got the B3 there, semitone, semitone, semitone. So we are over three semitones, that's a tone and a half of vibrato. So this is now, when we jump into the auto-tune, why it will sound a bit weird. So this is Elvis's voice, auto-tuned, and I've just done the first verse because you guys are gonna start to get the idea pretty early on that it's not working very well. When you feel small When tears are your eyes I'm 
there we have it. So something important to mention here is that you could pitch correct Elvis's voice if you wanted to and auto-tune and pitch correction two different processes. Pitch correction's done manually so say for example if I wanted to move this whole section here and just drag it up to a note then I could do. It's not snapping it automatically to notes you are manually putting it over the top of the notes that you want that particular vocal to hit. So Taking it back, I mean here, you can see the little bits where auto-tune's kicking in to just snap it to lines, but as we go back here, I mean this is something you'll be familiar with with the videos that we've been doing recently, just snapping to the lines here, but what I wanted to do was just have a little listen to where it snaps his voice to different notes in the scale because of that vibrato. When tears are like there, when tears are, is snapping it to the wrong note because of the way that Elvis uses his vibrato while ascending and descending. Like I said, he's always got that in his voice. So for auto-tune, automatically snapping these notes or snapping this voice to notes, it's an impossibility, it can't do it, even when it's given the scale because the vibrato covers notes, multiple notes from that scale. And look at how random that last note was that Elvis sang, but it didn't sound bad. It sounded nice, you know, it's Elvis's voice, it's unmistakable. But what he's doing is he's starting just flat of the D sharp three, and look where he's ending up. He's coming all the way down here, almost to the C sharp, which is the D flat. And then he goes all the way right at the end, and the last breath, his last part of the note, he's taking it back up to the D3, which is still halfway between where he's gone and where he started. So, again, we've covered a whole tone there, but it only seemingly sounded like one note when he sang it. And that's the point that... When you're looking at the waveforms, you understand how much range he covered just while he was holding one note, and that's why his voice is so distinctive. I haven't heard anything that's been pitch corrected or auto-tuned from Elvis yet. And when you're talking about performers that have been around very many years ago before auto-tune, they will be re-releases that are then auto-tuned. That's what happened with Queen and Freddie Mercury when they auto-tuned his voice. So. I haven't heard it yet and hopefully, fingers crossed, they're not going to start messing with his voice because anything you do to this voice is going to be catastrophic. Just leave his voice where it is, please. <laughs> if anybody's watching this from uh, record labels, publishing companies who might think about re-releasing something, don't auto-tune it, don't pitch correct it because, as I said in the other video, these kind of performances should be protected because they are as they were and they're already as perfect as they're ever going to get because it's the actual singer singing naturally and we've now got fortunately recordings of these artists that were standalone artists back in the day and they are still standalone now because so many artists nowadays are having their songs and their vocals auto-tuned pitch corrected and back in the day you'll never hear a vocal like these vocals being released now because back in the day they were singing naturally and they weren't being tuned and compartmentalized into these different sets of parameters that people are doing in the studio. They're just ticking boxes whereas back in the day they didn't do that. They released it as it was and just gave you their artistic expression 
just unfiltered 100% and that's exactly what we get here with Elvis. But keep those requests coming in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think as always. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!